Do you still use these in your guitar pedals? 9 volt batteries? If so, I'd like to welcome you to the 21st century. We have Coke Zero now, and computers in our pockets, and the training shoe. Obviously I'm messing about with you, but some people still do use these batteries in the guitar pedals. I in fact use one in my chromatic tuner. That makes it portable around my workshop. And when I'm playing live, it means that I can tune all my guitars before I go on stage and plug in my power supply, which is quite a nifty use for them. But some people use 9 volt batteries because they believe that they sound better. Calm down, keep your seats. It's not an Eric Johnson alert. The jack leads don't sound better one way than they do the other. It's just a simple fact that 9 volt batteries will give you 9 volts only for a small amount of time and then they give you lower volts as they wear out. A battery like this Duracell one will probably give you 9 volts for about 20 minutes. A cheapo battery like this from the pound shop, well I don't believe it ever gives you 9 volts. And a power supply plugged into your pedal will give you 9 volts no matter what. In some cases it will give you 9.6 volts, that's because of the design of the power supply. So that means it never goes flat and it never makes the pedal sound, you know, squishy. There's no special particles inside these batteries, you know, that usher through the mid-range frequencies and stop the harsh trebly frequencies from coming through and make everything sound warmer. It's just the fact that they don't give out as much voltage and it makes your pedal sound a bit spongy, which us guitarists like. So is there a way? that we can get that same response of a dying battery from a power supply. Well, yes, we can make something like this, a dying battery simulator. You will need an enclosure like this. I'm using these big ones, not because I think they're the best ones for the job, but because I ordered them by mistake. This smaller one that I've had for many years is actually a much better size. So I'd probably get one of them. But because I have about five or six of these laying about with nothing to use them for, I thought I'd use these instead. Inside that, you're gonna put two DC jacks, like these. And that's gonna allow you to plug your power supply in, in one end, and it's gonna go through a potentiometer like this, and then out the other one into your pedal. And speaking of potentiometers, most of these dying battery simulators use a 10k potentiometer but I use a 5k because I think it gives you a little bit more wiggle room to get the voltage just right and if you're going to house a pot in an enclosure and have it control the voltage well you need a lovely red knob to do that don't you so let's stop messing about and let's build a dying battery simulator the first thing we've got to do is prepare our potentiometer. So we're going to take the nut and the washer off. Please excuse my finger bandage. I've got a fractured finger at the moment. That's going to make the demo very interesting. And what we're going to do is we're going to take something abrasive. I bought this from Halfords. And we're just going to scuff up the back of the pot. And that's going to take off the oxide and mean that our solder will stick much better. Then you're going to take some wire of your choice. Today I'm going to use purple wire because why not? And what we're going to do is strip the ends of the wire and add a little bit of solder to them. So one end of each one of these wires is going to be soldered to the top of the pot. And that's going to enable us to ground the whole of the case. And then we're going to take two more pieces of wire. In this case, I've chose some yellow wire because yellow and purple kind of look nice together, I think. And we're going to strip the ends of those 
and add some more solder. And they're actually going to get soldered to two of the lugs of the pot. That would be the middle and the right hand side one. What that's going to do is when the pot's all the way this way, you're going to get the maximum amount of volts. And when the pot's all the way that way, you get the minimum amount of volts. Once all the wires are attached to the potentiometer, you can then stick it in the case. You might find that on your potentiometer, you have to snip off a little piece of metal. Now what we're going to do is insert our two DC jacks into the holes at either end of the enclosure. Once they're in place, you're going to add solder to each one of the terminals of the DC jacks. And in this design of DC jack, we're going to solder the purple wire or the ground wire to the shorter terminal on the DC jack. And then the yellow wire, the one that takes the positive voltage, to the longer terminal on the DC jack. And you're going to do that with all of the wires at either end of your dying battery simulator. And once all that's soldered together, you can put the back on the enclosure and fit your big red knob. But let's see what kind of effect we get on our different effects. So there you have it, a dying battery simulator. It makes your flanges sound funny and your fuzzies sound even better. I'm not selling this as a kit or selling any of the parts, so you're on your own. It's something new I'm trying with the channel. But if you want to find out how to drill cases like this, build things like this or modify things like this, well then you best like and subscribe, mind you? And maybe you'll see me next time in the next video.